Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I've got Kiwits in the lab. Uh, they sent these three wire strippers for free, just for me to show you guys. They asked me, I didn't know they had them. They said, hey, you want to take a look at our wire strippers? Sure. So they sent them. Here they are. Um, pretty cool. I'm going to take them out of the package, take a close look at them. But just, you know, just by taking them out of the package and feeling the weight of them, and taking a close look at them, they look like, I think they're going to be pretty nice. And I looked them up on Amazon to see what they cost, and wow, they're really inexpensive. I believe these two are like 7 bucks, six ninety nine, and this one's like under $14. So, really inexpensive. Let me just bring the camera over, show you the difference between these different three wire strippers. I mean, at that price, what the heck. Uh... Go ahead and use the link down below. Appreciate it. Helps the channel for free. That's a great way to support. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Let's bring the camera over and take a look. All right, so here we are, the three different sets. You can kind of see the size. Um, here's the measurements right here, the 8-inch. They're both 8-inch here. It's a 5-inch tool. Uh, let's just start with this guy, okay? So you can kind of see that uh, it says 14 millimeters the width of the jaws, about a 30 degree angle at the bottom, so you, when you're clipping, you can get down on the board. So it's nice to cut leads off, say, a PCB after you've put a through hole PCB together, maybe. And, you know, so your cutters, again, another picture, and stripping wires. Okay, and the other thing it says stranded gauge, 10 to 20 uh, gauge, okay? 0.8 millimeter to 2.6 millimeter and this one does say it's the KWS 102. Let's just pull it out So here's a table showing uh, Wire gauge or millimeter inch or millimeter squared So there's that. All right, so let's just go ahead and open it up. It's just got one staple in the package and There we are now Okay, first off This is interesting. It has this big old washer and it's there's a spring inside there and you can kind of see it okay so that's nice when you're cutting one-handed you have a nice spring release now that what I'm looking at here if you can see this is a nice blade I mean it looks really nice and when you bring the jaws together they come together flush so that's, I mean, that's first sign of quality. You know how sometimes some cheap ones, they don't come together square. But yeah, these come together nice and flush. And they feel very sharp. Now, I can tell you this uh, grip. The red has some give. And the black has some too. So, it's actually a nice texture and it has the ribs. So, it has a nice feel. Definitely has a nice feel to it. Here, let's cut some wire. Yeah, just slices through that, no problem. And I'm not sure a gauge without looking. So here, let's just come down to this one. Oh yeah, look at that. It doesn't look like it nicks the copper. So I, I got lucky and chose the right gauge. But that was very sharp and easy to do. So, yep, there we go. And I can feel, by the way, just feel the edges on these blades, and they feel sharp. Okay. So, that seems very nice. And you can see, millimeters on this side, and, and wire gauge on this side. Alright, so let's take out the next biggest guy. And these two are very similar instruments. They both wire, different wire gauges. You know, slots like that. And they're all referred to as multifunction because it has the cutters plus the wire gauges on this one. This one, here, let's pull it out of the package. By the way, flip it over. Compare the tables. So this one goes to 20 and this one goes down to 22. So it looks like this one has one notch better as far as uh, gauge wires now this one does not have the spring built in but you know 
you can still operate with one hand. I mean, that's kind of the way I do it. But, okay, so the, uh, the difference between these would be that this one has these 20 to 10. It's marked a little bit differently on this one. This one had millimeters and wire gauge. This one has, a, it looks like solid and stranded. Okay, so besides that, it also has uh, the pliers at the end, which also come together square. So that's really nice that they're not, you know what I mean? That they, they when they come together square, I've, I've had some cheap ones that come in those kits and they, they just don't close square. Okay, so the multi-function purpose of this one, it also has, okay, let's start with pliers, the uh, wire cutter, the strippers, and then it has this loop. And I think that's for putting a wire through and using this to pull the wire and using that as a grip, basically. And then it has these cutters, a 540, 1024, and down to 632. So... What that is, I got a screw here. Hopefully, it fits one of these. And what that is is, um, if you never used one of these, this is a big screw. Maybe I don't have one that fits. Oh wait, hold it. I think it fits this one. Alright, so what you have to do is you just screw it through. Actually, it doesn't, I don't know if those are the right threads. Shoot. Okay, so this one looks like it's a 1024. So you find the right size. And then you thread it through. And you want to cut your wire down, or your bolt down. So you thread it through to the length you want, and then you cut it. There you go. Then you back this guy out. And there's the other piece. And there it is. And there's the chunk I just cut off. So that's how you can, we need to change the size of a bolt. I use these these kind of cutters uh, fairly often when I put together a project. I have the wrong length of bolts. So sometimes I buy a long one and then it fits several different areas on the box I'm putting together. Some of them I cut down so that way I don't have to cut a, uh, buy a bunch of different sizes. So yeah, they work really great. The other thing is it has a knife blade here that kind of does the job as this one but it's a little bit different you know but again when I fill these they feel very sharp and you can probably see how sharp they look but the other thing is these things when you pull them together these jaws are tight and there is this nut that you can tighten up if it gets loose on you it says wear eye protection warning you do not use on live circuits Cut copper only. So there's some warning signs on it. Only coax. So this this right here. Okay, so now we're getting down to this part. This is for crimping things. This is for coax. See, insulation, non-insulation, insulation. So here, let me show you something here. Here, actually, let's cut a wire. Okay, we'll strip this wire. And what gauge does this say? This says 14 gauge right here. No, this is stranded, so I'll use the second one up. Okay. And let's just strip off that much, I guess. And then I pull. There we go. So that works really nice. Then I want to put one of these guys on. This is for a 14 gauge wire. So I just slide this in there. Well, let me get the wires together. Okay, and then I see the wires just protrude right here. Then I grab this guy, and look, uh, the blue one 
I think it matches this color, I'm guessing. Now the one's just insulation, if I crimp this one, it has a jaw that's kind of rounder, so it's not going to smush through the insulation. And this one's more dimpled, so that's the one with non-insulation. It'll kind of push in a little tighter. So just drop that in there right there, and then crimp. And very easy. And that is a very tight crimp. I could see the wires get smushed down when I did it. So there you go. All right, let's move on to this guy. They're all referred to as multifunction strippers, okay? And this one was the KWS 105. Again, the links are just down below to help support the channel. Now, this one said uh, 10 to 22, 0.6 to 2.6, 0.8 to 2.6. This one's 0.5 to 2.6, so this one covers a little bit broader range, 10 to 24 gauge, so uh, KWS 103. And, okay, so we got the stripper up here, but looking down here, I have the crimper like I did here, and I have all these different gauges, okay? But you can see the cutter here, too. That blade uh, looks like it replaceable maybe but it looks very sharp it's it's chiseled on both sides and then it blunts up against this this handle here this side but look at that so and and you can see the different crimpers here and you can see how they're spaced and how they're not going to crush all the way through okay now this one has this spring here just look at how it's put together it feels very tight. There's no movement like on this one. No movement. These guys are all very solid. And they all have the same red, kind of a little bit hard, harder plastic. Actually, these are softer. This one's a little bit harder, but still somewhat soft. But this black part's very nice and soft. And you can see the ribbing. These two are ribbed very similar. This one has ribs all the way down. But yeah, very, you know, they feel, the, all of these tools feel very nice in the hand. Can't tell if that's metal on that side. But, okay, so the, the way this one works is you have this thing. And here, let's just grab a wire. Here, let's go ahead and complete this wire. Let's just make a little bit of a cable for my bench here. Maybe I have something I need to wire that's going to be this long. Let's just say. Okay, let's go find the cutter. Wow, that was like butter. <laughs> that was nice. Okay, so then I feed this in and see it hits that plastic thing. And it's going to cut. The cutter is here and this is a gripper. So it's going to cut that little thing. So if I want it to go longer... Yeah, I just push that, I guess. Oh, here we go. So if I push this down, it has a spring on this thing. Look. And then you can push it in the way you want it. Okay, I guess that's how you work it. You push that in, it pops out, and then you push it in. I just want to go all the way on this one. Just No, I don't. I want to put another one of these guys on. So I want to make it probably that length. Let's just see. Yep, that looks about right, probably. So then when you push, you see how the jaws grab the wire? And they're pretty sharp teeth. And let's see. Wow, that's cool. And then those dig in, and that, that worked pretty slick. All right, so let's try to use these as a crimper. Got another one of these. Okay, so... It shows red, blue, and yellow. It's a little confusing, but the yellow's in between. I feel like the yellow is the bigger one. I think it's supposed to be up here. You know what? Uh, I'm looking at this thing right here, and this is non-insulated. All right, guys, so, yeah, it's a little confusing. I'm not sure about this, but I feel like these... Uh, these guys are gonna are for the non-insulated down here. And I feel like this is for the insulated. So I'm gonna use that guy and squish all the way down. 
Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Very tight. So there we go. Yeah, these are kind of nice when you're just doing a lot. When you just put it in and... I don't know. Shoot. I, I guess it's a personal preference. Uh, but I think... I actually have different brands of all these styles. And these look like they might be just as good as my more expensive ones. So, I don't know. I guess time will tell. I'll, I'll use these and I'll report back if I find anything bad. Um, and, yeah. Anyway, I'll go ahead and use them on the bench here. So, hey, what do you guys think of these things? Um, I mean, for the price, it's pretty unbelievable, I think. Uh, I, You know, I'm really interested in using this. These kind of automatic strippers, I kind of call them, because they just, you know, you just grab it and strip it. I just kind of like that where, um, I don't know, when I'm doing a lot of wire stripping, and this type of stripper, I've become to, you know, like a lot. So, but, you know, you always need the different types. And so, so I do have strippers that, you know, I have some like this, some like this. And I have some automatic ones that are somewhat similar to this one, too. Uh, but mine cost a bit more than these. <laughs> so, but yeah, I feel like the grips, you know, they, they just feel pretty good in the hand. Uh, I mean, they feel really good in the hand, actually. And I'm, I'm actually a little surprised because of the price. I thought they would be kind of cheap. And I didn't know if I wanted to do the review once I got to look at them. But... Yeah, when, when I felt them in the package and the weight, I thought, yeah, they seem pretty nice. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know and uh, use links down below. Thanks, guys.